I'm ready to go if you are. Sure am. Okay. Channel 3's Laura Hand took a ride of a lifetime in a voice from Syracuse F-16. Now it's your turn. One, two, three, four, it's all right. Here we go. Okay. See, it's pretty responsive. It is. Beginning Monday, watch F-16 in flight at noon and 6 on Channel 3. Outstanding. Being a news person has its ups and its downs, its highs and its lows. Sometimes, literally, it turns out. And so does being a member of the Air National Guard, which here in Syracuse has been training with new planes the past two years. Those planes are officially operational now, and Laura Hand knows firsthand because she's been along on a flight. That's right, John. If you've been around Hancock Field or in the North Country, you may have seen the F-16s on practice flights. Well, we thought you'd like to see what flying them is like from the other side. First of all, you have to know that you don't just get in and fly in the F-16, even if you're just going along for the ride. Before you get to this point, there's basic survival training and a lot of precision fitting for specialized clothes and equipment. You know, I didn't mind it when you fitted me up, but now it's beginning to, now it's starting it's to, starting get to hit me. That's, that's, why that's why I don't want to tell you any stories. That's why I don't want to tell you any stories. Master no, Sergeant Don Mueller has been doing life support for the boys from Syracuse for 12 years. He makes sure the pilot's equipment is in working order, and he was my instructor. You never have any problem with claustrophobia or anything? Not so far. Okay. Among the things I had to learn, how to breathe under the pressure of higher gravity caused by the speeding plane. So you're going to have to push a little bit harder when you're breathing. All right? You're going to get a lot of air in there, but you're going to have, you'll have to force it out. Okay? Can you breathe through there all right? Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. Great. Besides the helmet, there's an anti-G suit to help keep blood from flowing away from your brain, a survival vest, and a parachute vest. It all weighs about 30 pounds and goes on with an assortment of zippers, laces, straps, and buckles. And part of the training is learning how to get out of it all, if needed, in case of emergency. We'll go through some safety procedures and things. Okay. Um, There's a simulated cockpit, and for a couple of hours, we covered just about everything that could go wrong and what to do about it. Not as a scare tactic, but to increase my chances of survival in case of problems. All emergency controls and handles inside the cockpit are yellow or yellow and black striped. Okay, now lower the canopy. Okay, reaching in down there. A little bit more? Good. Okay? That's the way you're going to be. Can we handle that? Okay. Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to practice a, uh, an ejection. Two ways, scrambling out as if the plane were still on the ground, lots of unbuckling, and as if in midair, being ejected in the rocket seat. Eject, eject, eject. Are you still alive? That's it. You ever hear people talk about car accidents and how they think it's going in slow motion? Mm -hmm. This is the way it'll feel somewhat. Like and getting out isn't enough. There's also getting to the ground. You've successfully bailed out of the uh, aircraft here. Uh, hopefully, what'll happen now is your parachute will open. One, you've got more courage than I do in that department, too. Although you were left hanging, you're not going to leave us hanging. This is the first part of a series of reports. Exactly, and it takes more than a couple of years for pilot training in earnest. But since I was just along for the ride, tomorrow will take you actually flying. I've seen some of this. You won't want to miss it. Thanks, Laura.